Welcome to the Small Business Show. I'm your host, Lori Brooks. I'm here with Dana Bonner and Florence Taylor of Pink and Pretty Nails. Listen in as Dana, Florence, and I chat about how Dana's hobby became a passion and she turned her passion into her present day practice. So before we begin, I want to rewind the clock just a bit. And this may actually be a question more for your mom than it is for you. I'm curious. Way back when Dana was a child, when she was, say, five or six, you know, years old, and you might ask her, what did she want to be when she grew up? What was the answer to that question? What did you guys think the future would look like? Mm -hmm. She was a very playful child and just curious. Like, just, but when she did become, I would say, between 12 and 13, she knew what she wanted to do. Um, she talked about them there. Don't be my nails. Anyone's nails that, you know, would allow, anyone that would allow her to touch the hands. Uh, they weren't always the best, but she tried. She tried really hard. Yes, she did. <laughs> that being said, so when she came to me, she's like, Mom, I see how she said, um, here's a school that I can go to. If you would allow me, um, I'll, you know, I'll still do my schoolwork. I'll be, you know, do what I have to do at school. And I'll go to school. Like, oh, that was at night. I need to look at that. Right. To hear a, bit, a little bit more about that. So Dana, the Dana that I have, very spunky and very, she brought it to me. So I looked at it and I thought about it. And that's, you know, that's going to put a lot in place. Mm -hmm. It'll be school work, go in high school, and then you got to go to school at night. Mm -hmm. And I will not always be there because I was going to school. I want to do it. So I said, okay, great. We signed it up. I signed her off on it. And she attended school every night after high school. That is outstanding. Talk about ambitious. <laughs> so where did that entrepreneur spirit come from? Because I know that you were very ambitious as a child. Did that come from your parents? Or did that come from your mom? That came from my mom. I think I figured that out later on. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I was already ready for like, to go in a salon and I was like, relax, <laughs> take a breather, you just finished school. And I was like, well, I want to go in a nail salon so bad. And it was hard, you know, because being black and the majority of the nail industry is Asian, mm -hmm. it was very hard to get your foot in there. So after, you know, just getting a couple of no's, I was like, all right, let me just listen to my mother for a second. and take a breather but 18 17 that's when I definitely was in like that it's gonna be a career what do you feel like were some of the first steps that you took once you decided okay this is definitely going to be it you finished school you took that breather what were some of the first steps you took to then begin establishing yourself in the I feel like she started in shops like she would go and she would knock on things I knock on but you know that's the work mm -hmm. and she got a lot of no Yes. And the yeses weren't always what she wanted. I mean, it's not that it wasn't what she wanted. It wasn't what she expected. Mm -hmm. um, because she was working with Asian. Asian. And they were very nice. It was a few times that I know I had to step in. Because again, she was still younger. You know? mm -hmm. so, um, but after we kind of got grounded with that and we kind of worked that way through that and I said that's never going to happen to you again like you can't you're not going to work like that for the way they were treating her mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. for the money that they were treat, um, giving to her I felt like disrespect that they were giving to her because she was a young girl and she was black so um we just went we were put our foot to the ground and just started running after that like we really really Dana did a lot of work because of course she was out of school, she was looking for the work. Mm -hmm. And she came across some very nice people that gave her work for a chance. Nice. Very nice. So once you ran across this people and they gave you the chance, and I'm not sure what that chance exactly was, if you want to dive into that a little bit, but what was it that made you 
actually build out the store for yourself. You had gone into nails, you had decided this was your passion, you were working with others, and recognized that that necessarily was not the, the avenue that you wanted. You clearly felt, and your mother clearly felt, that you wanted more. You wanted to see yourself have more respect in the industry, have more respect as, as you know, a nail tech in general. So what do you feel were the first steps to establishing yourself here with Pinker? I think, honestly, it was because when I first started, it really was just doing nails and making people happy. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't like, let me have a salon and right. have other, it was just nails. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. It wasn't never, branding or... Yeah, yeah, it was never none of that. So what sparked that? What sparked it was, I think, at the time when I started, doing, there wasn't a lot of artists, in mm -hmm. nail artists in Boston. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to bring that out more. So I would start to like have get different stuff done like you know these little dots little gems or other things and I would charge them kind of nothing mm. compared to what the salon charges now and it was just to have them show other people in the city like nice nails and have them come to us more and visit us over here in Seven Hill because we didn't have that back then so. definitely so you recognized that there was a need to start driving the customers to the location. It was really, you know, the ups and flow of the way business goes. You have customers, but then there's always that point in time when you need to expand and move forward. Tell us about business itself. Tell us the, the days you're open, how often you, you are here on site, things of that sort. Want to do a pack and ask? We're open six days a week, usually 10 to 7 p.m. I usually come in early days to, you know, take a few early clients. Sometimes I stay really late in the evening as well, so. They're over. Then it's normally here six days a week. Sometimes seven. I'll call and I'll be like, where are you? I'm at the shop. So she, it's not that she's a people pleaser. She makes sure that the clients that want to be seen, they seen. It's passion. You ask hours. She says 10 o'clock she opens. Sometimes she's leaving home at 7 o'clock. I got 8 o'clock time. Like for Dana, I got 8 o'clock time. Right. Time she gets home, 9 30, 10 o'clock. Um, on a good day, I might see her about 7. That's her schedule. My schedule here, it kind of fluctuates. I'm here every Saturday. I don't miss a Saturday. And I try to be here this week out, pop in and out. But work here for us is. Not that it's a number ending, but we just, you need to know, if you need your nails then you need to clean, but you need someone to talk to, because it's not just about the nails. We have, you know, our friends come in, our, our babes, they come in, and they really talk. We have some nice conversations here. Um, um, it's like a therapy session, I would say, you know what I mean? Yeah. People live here, and they, they, when they leave here, they feel lifted, they feel revived, they feel happy, they love their nails. In the conversation that we do. It's a warm atmosphere. Um, our nails are great. They're great. Um, and I, I like these. I like these. Yeah. It's well, an absolute done, I've told you we've done a great job together. No, you guys have done a lovely job together. I absolutely love the location, the space. So I myself will be popping in soon so I can. Stop with my homemade nail jobs over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, if you could go back, say 10 to 15 years, and ask yourself just one thing, what do you think that would be? Or tell yourself just one thing. Um, I would tell myself to stay more focused. Mm. I keep telling myself that now. <laughs> my brother does as well. And it's, it's big. That's why I say stay focused because you know, as a teenager, you're like into like, oh, your friends are going to the parties and you're, you want a little boyfriend or you want to, I don't know, maybe go to a little corner store. There's a lot of girl things that weren't needed. And the generation now is actually staying focused, which I love. So if I took more of that back then, I put that on myself, I would have been further now. You know, we would have been bigger now too. So. I understand. Focus is definitely something that I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle yeah. with. It's the entrepreneurial mind. Right. You have 
this project that pops up in your head or that project or this opportunity that comes about and that does happen, but you kept the focus to do that. So if you had a magic wand and could change anything at all operationally, what do you feel you would change and why? How do you feel it would affect the industry? Um, I think I, I think I would I'm not a male tech, but I, I spent a lot of time with the group. I think that we would change the conception of uh, that we're not driven, that we're not, you know, great at our job. We really take our time, individualize, you know, people come in, clients come in, and I call them a baby, they come in, and they're not getting up here until they're satisfied. It's not a change. You know, a lot of us will to, we will go before we got this done. Just to see how they would run their, their you know, mm -hmm. the business. And it was like a chain gang type thing. Like everyone's walking on the same type of nails, the same type of art. Mm -hmm. and here you get what you want. You can show us a picture, you would be like, you'd be amazed. Some of the work you have, I'm amazed. I watched them do the work, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I'm seeing the work so, myself, and that's okay. what I'm saying. You know, I'm over here hiding them. <laughs> don't hide, don't hide, don't hide. For me, saying that, I think the overall is definitely would be like bring more, you know, the hair salon vibe, the like, you feel like you're at home, you're with your girlfriend. That was a magic one, would be just to bring more of a vibe and more of a loving relationship in between all of us. Um, so it's not so like just. Building more community. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. Well, I thank you both so very much for joining me today and for sharing your shop with us and your time.